Hello Makers! So, I made my first ever thing. So it's, it's this thing right here. This is, it's, it's a dolly which I got from Amazon attached to my DSLR, but it's powered by a pancake stepper motor which is connected to an easy driver. The easy driver is connected to an Elegoo Uno R3 which is like an Arduino Uno, which in turn is connected to an IR sensor. And that IR sensor is controlled with this, it's hooked up to a power supply, and it can do stuff like this. So today I finally get to talk to you about this DSLR dolly that I've been talking about and I've been hitting at and I've been dropping uh, time-lapse videos on Twitter and I've got, I, I had so many questions asked about this dolly so I finally had the time to put everything together and record this episode. Now a bit of a background, so I did this dolly for a very particular reason. First of all, I have this slider right here and this slider you can put the camera up here as I was saying you can put the camera up here and you can take a really nice panning shot so you can move the camera very slowly and you have like some nice panning shots from side to side but that's the thing you can only do it like a pan shot um, now I, I could have it's still a nice effect and I could have motorized this and have it like move automatically from one side to the other but that wasn't enough because what I want is more of a pivoting and rotating slider. Now in order to get a, a pivoting slider so this would have to be slightly free and as it moves sideways you kind of start turning the camera or rotating the camera so it's always pointing in the same place. You could also do um, a kind of like a mechanized version of it, but I felt it was a bit too complicated. This is where this dolly came in. This was a $20 dolly, which I found on Amazon. It's a very easy concept. You have the DSLR or the webcam or the camera that attaches to here, and you have your dolly. Same concept as this, but you can move, turn the wheels. Well, let me just get this out of the way. You can turn the wheels, and then you have a revolving dolly. So you can take like centered shots, which which makes life better. Now, seeing as I like to do time lapses, I wanted to give them a bit of, you know, uh, make it a bit more dynamic. Uh, I can't spend like five, six hours waiting and moving the camera very slowly to take shots. So I wanted to automate it. And this is where this comes in. And I had a lot of ideas. I thought about putting like a, a trolley with it, a motorized trolley to push it, but I felt that was a bit too much. Then I thought I'd do, uh, I'd replace the whole back wheel to do like, um, like a differential because when it turns in a circle, when it turns in a circle like this, one wheel is turning more than the other. So it has to be a differential mechanism. So I went for this version instead, which is just having one motor turn one wheel. So it's always constantly turning that rather than any other wheel. And the other three wheels move freely depending on the circumference which you turn the steering to. The concept is relatively simple. Now, I bear in mind, this is my first ever Arduino project like from scratch. So it, it took me a while to do this. It's by no means perfect, not at all, far from it. I'm sure a lot of you will find a lot of problems with this, but it works and that's what matters right now. I do have an idea of how to evolve this going forward, but for now, this works. Now, once you get yourself a power adapter and, and plug it in into the Arduino, you simply grab your remote and just press a button and it starts moving. And the way I did it because of my limited knowledge of Arduino, um, 
it's done in a very specific format. To stop it, just press the reset button. So, you have buttons from zero to nine, which are all different speeds or directions. Everything is calculated um, through a one meter length. So you have button zero, which makes it travel a meter in 30 seconds. You have button one, which makes it travel a meter in half an hour. Button two makes it travel one meter in one hour. Button three makes it travel one meter in five hours. And button four makes it travel one meter in 10 hours. Buttons five through nine do the exact same thing but in reverse. So ultimately you could easily program this to make it travel 10 hours in one direction, stop and then change direction and do 10 hours. So if you have a longer time lapse you want to do, maybe 20 hours, um, well, you can do it like, like that. I, at the moment, I can only do it travel one meter because, well, limitations of my ability to program Arduino and large numbers, um, but it's working so far as you've seen. So now I'm gonna show you how I did this, what you need, how to put it together. Um, yeah, let's get to it. First thing you need is 3D printed parts, which I designed in Fusion 360. So we're gonna grab ourselves some Peggy. Peggy is more than enough. I'm gonna use Spanner Hands Red Peggy. I'm gonna throw it in Robo R2 and well, do a traditional time lapse of that print. Today's episode is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands and thousands of videos uh, turned into classes for anything that you want to learn. Whether it's arts, crafts, illustration, motion graphics, music, photography, Arduino, Blender, Fusion 360, they have it all. Personally, I've recently become hooked on the Arduino classes because it would have made my life much easier when I started programming this DSLR dolly. Well, yes, I did that through lots of search online and trying to figure out what I want. Having everything organized in one place and in classes with an easy way to follow makes life so much easier. Now, Skillshare is a monthly subscription service costing you less than ten dollars a month to view all the classes that are available on Skillshare however Skillshare have agreed to give the first 500 viewers well you guys the possibility to get two months free in order to do so all you have to do is sign up through the link in the video description so yeah go at it and thank you Skillshare So for this, you will need the dolly. You'll need an Elegoo Uno R3 or an Arduino R3, a low profile stepper motor, an easy driver, an IR receiver, an IR remote, a 12 volt power supply, seven male to female jumper cables, the 3D printed parts, of course. Then you'll need some nuts and screws. So you have three M3 by 28, two M3 by 12, two M3 nuts, seven M3 by eight and a couple of M2 by one. So first things first, we'll move these out of the way. You need to grab the dolly and you need to take one part and take the axis out. Move the screw completely and undo one wheel by removing this screw here. So first you're gonna grab the axle and you're gonna just slide it into the base. It's gonna be a slight tight fit, don't worry about it. Next, grab your two M3 by 15s and tighten only the, uh, the screws on the side. Then you can secure those with the M3 nuts. Next, you're gonna grab the wheel and you're gonna insert the three M3 by 25 nuts into the wheel. You're gonna secure it in place and turn them over. You're gonna grab the, uh, the screw that you, uh, that you use to unscrew the wheel from the axle and just leave it there in place. I'll get to that in a bit. And then grab the, uh, the wheel gear and just line them up with the holes and then tighten everything down. Then, as you can see in there, you have that screw that you placed in. You're just gonna throw in the wheel on the axle and just tighten that up. And as you can see now, you have the axle back in place. So what you can do at this point is simply grab the dolly and place everything together. And the dolly is now in place. Now for the electronics. Um, first you're going to grab the panking motor, going to grab a couple of M3 by 8 and you're going to very gently just place them don't over tighten them just yet. You just want to hold the motor in place and let it slide freely like that. I'm gonna grab another M3 by eight, start preparing the threads on the, uh, on the motor gear, just enough until the threads appear inside. And then what you're going to do is align the, 
the straight part of the motor and just push it in. Once it's in, simply tighten that screw. It's not gonna use enough torque to actually push that out, but just, you know, extra feature. What you need to do next is tighten these two screws just here. Uh, so you're just gonna push the motor slightly forward until you have a decent grip with the wheel gear and then just tighten that up. And that's done. Next, you're gonna grab your Elego Uno or your Arduino Uno. You're just gonna put two screws in there, you're gonna align those and secure the board in place. Don't tighten too much. Um, it's just there literally to hold everything in place. So no force is needed. Grab your easy driver, same thing. A couple of M3x8s and just secure it in place. Finally, you're gonna grab the IR sensor, gonna throw in those M2 screws and also tighten those in place. Now this is the important part, which is the wiring. Now I'm gonna leave schematics in the video description below, but just in case, the stepper motor wires go up here. Now the polarity of these all depend on the, uh, the motor that you buy. In my case, uh, this motor, first of all, didn't have this plug. I had to actually make that on my own. It just came with loose wires. Um, but this is the polarity that should be attached with this particular stepper motor onto the easy driver. Then you're going to grab one wire and plug it into the ground up here. And I'm going to grab a purple wire where it says M plus. The yellow wire will be plugged into the ground and the purple wire, which is from the M plus on the easy driver, will go to the VIN pin on the Elego. Next, I'm gonna use two pins out of these three. I'm gonna use the direction pin and the step pin over here. So I'm going to use blue for the step pin and green for the direction pin. The green is gonna go in pin number two. The blue, which is the step pin, will go in pin number three. All that's left to connect now, is the infrared sensor. So for the infrared sensor, I'm gonna use purple, gray, and white. So the signal pin will go in pin four on the board. White will go on the ground and gray will go into the five volt pin. So now that it's done, all I'm gonna do is hook up a USB cable here insert the other end into the PC, and I'm gonna run Arduino IDE. So this is the sketch for the Kedi. Um, I, I, Honestly speaking, I don't think I'm qualified enough to go into all of the details here, uh, but just to give you an idea, as I said, this was my first ever custom sketch, so I'm quite sure it could be done better. Um, however, what it says here, it includes the stepper motor library and the IR remote library. It defines the step as 50. It initiates the receiver pin as pin number four. This just sets which stepper uh, cables are the uh, step and the direction. And these two just, initiate the receiving of the code and actually decode the result received by the remote. So here in the loop, this is where it's, it's a very simple code. So we have the step and the speed, which is calculated here. Um, and as you can see, these are the only things that change except these cases here. Now, these are the buttons, um, the, uh, the, the code for the button that is received. Now, not every remote is going to be the same. In order to get that code, to find out what your code is for the remote that you're using, um, I'm gonna leave a link in the video description as to where you can find the very, very simple sketch you can upload to your Arduino to figure out um, which code is for which button. So these are set here. Um, so just in case you want to change the timing and the distance, you want to make it shorter, Keep in mind that this is approximately 32,000 here steps is approximately one meter. So this 600 here is approximately 30 seconds, whereas this is about 30 minutes. So 10 would be an hour, that would be five hours, and one would be 10 hours. And that goes into a certain direction. These go to the other direction. As you can see, the steps has a negative, which means it will turn the opposite way. That's from button zero to nine. However, I created two more codes here, and that is um, this does 20 hours, and this, just in case, does 30 hours for those extra long time lapses. And 
Basically, it does one meter, which takes 10 hours in one direction, and then does another meter, which will take another 10 hours in the other direction. And this is the same thing, but it increases to another um, cycle of the other direction. The buttons I use here are the EQ button and the repeat button. So once you've loaded the sketch, simply go on tools, choose the board, which is an Arduino Genuino Uno, choose the port, verify that everything's fine. You should get it done compiling without any errors. Once that's done, just simply upload. Now that it's uploaded, all we need to do is simply plug in the power and test it out. Grab your remote, press number zero, and it starts moving very slowly, which is what we want. This is the 30 second for one meter length. To stop it, simply press the recent button and you're done. You want to test out the other ones. This will be very, very slowly. Let me show you how slow that is. And that is literally just moving it half an hour for a meter. So yeah, it's going to be very, very slow. If you're using this um, and you want to know if, it work, if it's working, just when you're doing the 10 hour one, just hold your finger to it and you can feel the, uh, the steps. You can feel them ticking and you'll know that it's working just fine. And there you have it. This is my baby. This, <laughs> to get it to this state, it took me, I, I started this about six months ago. Um, it took me about three weeks in total to get the code um, right. Honestly speaking, I wish I knew about Skillshare. Um, it would have made my life much easier. Uh, but that's beside the point. It's here now, it works. As I mentioned, this is by no means the final design. It just works as it is, and that is all that matters. Uh, you, could, you saw what it's capable of doing as is, so it can only get better. As you see here, these were all iterations. I've done different gears. I've tried pulleys with rubber bands, but that was the best thing that worked. I've also used like an easy stepper driver, but I, I didn't want to end up using this because it's got a lot of slack and a lot of give, and it wasn't giving me consistent movement. Um, so yeah, this, this is gonna work for now. The only thing that I would suggest is to make sure that the wires are not in the way. Um, there's not a lot of power in here going through, so there isn't a lot of torque. And uh, yeah, just make sure that the wires are not in the way of anything. So I would suggest just hanging them up so this can just move freely and the wires will have more than enough slack. That is it for this episode. I will leave links to everything I've used in the video description. Um, I, I shouldn't cost you more than maybe $50 in total to make this, considering that the closest thing that I've seen to this costs quite a few hundred bucks. Um, I, I think this, if, you're not, if, if you don't want something too elaborate, this is gonna work. Eventually, it'll get better. Um, I'm gonna leave links to the schematics, the Arduino sketch, and everything else in the video description. And yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. That is it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much to Skillshare for deciding to sponsor this episode. It is truly appreciated. Don't forget, if you wanna sign up to Skillshare, the first 500 people that click on the link below and sign up, get two months free. If you have any questions, comment section below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and as always, Happy making, guys.